Wine grapes grow best in temperate climates. But if grapevines are well protected, they can survive a Canadian winter. The riper the grapes, the sweeter the wine. So growers wait as long as possible before harvesting their crop. Pickers gather grapes by hand, cutting off the bunches with shears to avoid tearing the plant. For red wine, winemakers use the entire red grape, juice, skin, pulp, and even seeds. For white wine, they use just the juice of white grapes. While the winemaking process itself is certainly a factor, the quality of the grapes is what will ultimately determine the quality of the wine. Grapes are affected by weather, by soil conditions, and by how the vines are pruned during and between seasons. The grapes go into the crusher, then into the presser, which squeezes out the juice. Inside the winery, the result of all that crushing and pressing ends up in large stainless steel tanks. The winemaker adds yeast to make the sugar in the grape juice convert to alcohol. That's called fermentation. Winemakers constantly experiment with fermentation to try to improve the quality of their wine. They take samples of grape juice and mix them with different types of yeast. Yeast is found throughout the environment, in wild berries for instance. They hydrate the yeast with a bit of grape juice, then pour the mix into the grape juice sample, let it ferment, then see how it turns out. The big fermentation tanks are refrigerated and monitoring their temperature is critical. White wine must be fermented at 17 degrees Celsius, red wine at 30 to 35 degrees Celsius. The fermentation period depends on the type of wine. White wine has to ferment for three weeks, red wine for just 10 days. Rosé wine is somewhat of a half-breed, made with red grapes but fermented slowly like white wine. It comes out pink. There's an extra step in making red wine. During fermentation, they drain the tank to aerate the wine. The oxygen helps the yeast work faster over the short 10-day fermentation period. Then they pump the wine back in through the top of the tank to mix everything thoroughly. During fermentation, they not only monitor temperature, but also the sugar level. As the juice becomes wine, the sugar level drops and the alcohol level increases. Except for very sweet wines, fermentation is done when the sugar's gone. And the alcohol content is 11 to 13% for red wine, 11 to 11.5% for white and rosé. The wine is stored for a few months, then it's run through several pressure filters to remove any particles. Then comes time to bottle the wine. Large wineries have fully automated bottling plants, smaller operations, semi-automated systems like this one. The key in bottling wine is to avoid getting air inside because oxygen turns wine sour. The colored wine bottles protect the wine from light, which can also affect the taste. People have used cork to plug wine bottles since ancient times because it creates a tight seal that keeps the air out. Cork, incidentally, is a type of tree bark. It grows back so the tree isn't harmed. Inside the bottle, the wine continues to undergo subtle organic changes as it ages.